Hartsburg Coaches Show. My, myself and Ray are here with Coach Reeve. Coach, uh, congratulations on getting your second uh, district win last week against Lano. Thank you. Appreciate it. It was a good win. Um, talk about the game. Uh, you know, what stood out to Ray and I was obviously how well your defense played. Mm -hmm. um, um, the big plays that, 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 that they created. And, and also something else that jumped out at us up there is, and I know you're going to talk about all this in, in your recap, but our offensive and defensive lines mm -hmm. just controlling the line of scrimmage. Absolutely, absolutely. No, that's where it starts. And, uh, you know, you talk about defense. I thought, uh, you know, it was uh, our best defensive game uh, to this point. Uh, and, I, and I think our defense has just continued to get better over the course of the year. You know, we started off the year with a lot of new faces over there. Um, we played with uh, several different lineups early on in the year um, for various reasons. And, um, you know, as those kids have, have played more and more, they just are playing faster and with more confidence uh, in what they're doing. And that, that makes all the difference. And, um, you know, uh, last week against Lano, I thought that uh, – uh, like you said, it started up front with our defensive line. I thought uh, we did a great job of controlling the line of scrimmage uh, with our defensive front. I thought our linebackers, uh, you know, really played well. Um, and they just, you know, Lano just uh, had a hard time getting anything going, you know, running the football. And that was one of the things we talked about is that, um, you know, you, you can't allow an offense that tries to be balanced uh, you know, like spread offenses try to do where they try to run and throw it. You can't allow them to do both. And uh, you've got to take something away first. Um, and we felt like, you know, we couldn't allow them to run the football. That was something that they had done, um, you know, well along with throw it. Um, and, uh, and our kids did a great job of, of uh, you know, really executing what we were trying to do. Um, I thought we played uh, with tremendous uh, energy. Um, and, you know, we played with an edge on defense, and that's what you have to have in order to play uh, great defense. And, um, you know, and then, and then as far as, uh, you know, their ability to throw the ball, uh, one of the things we felt like we had to do was get some pressure on them. And uh, I thought that, uh, you know, our kids uh, did a great job of, of getting pressure. I thought we uh, did a good job in the secondary as far as, you know, trying to take away the things that they were trying to do. Uh, you know, made a couple of adjustments in the you know in the middle of the game as well uh, to uh, to adjust to a couple of things that that they uh, they had tried to do to us early in the game. But um, but by and large, it was a it was a really dominating performance uh, defensively, um, and that's what you want to see. You know, going into the game, I think I even mentioned this on our show last week, but I, I know that I talked to it to talked about it to our kids, is that this is the time of year when you know championship football teams begin to separate themselves and and the first part of being a championship football team is that you got to play great defense and uh um and so you know our kids um like i said have taken that to heart um and uh you know i thought you know played at a new level um the other night in, in terms of you know our energy in terms of our execution in terms of our aggressiveness how fast we played and, uh, and it showed uh, with with uh, with how the game went. Um, you know, offensively, uh, again, uh, like you said, I thought that th their defensive front, um, that they had some good players in their defensive front, um, but I thought that uh, our offensive line did a great job of not only neutralizing them, but but at the same time, um, you know, uh, dominating the, uh, the line of scrimmage a lot of times up front and gave us an opportunity to be able to run the football. Uh, that's another characteristic of a championship football team. You got to be able to run the football, and uh, you know I, I thought that uh, you know we did a great job up front. Uh, you know they gave us a lot of different fronts, um, and uh, you know I thought that uh, those guys uh, did a good job of identifying that. That's that's not easy to do. It's not easy to um, you know to to have to block you know several different fronts and, and be it you know and it's something different every single time that you go up there and applying your rules like we talked about last week uh coach hadaway uh is our you know coach's offensive line he's he's done a great job of uh preparing our kids each and every week and and uh, and those guys up front um do a great job of of preparing um you know they spend a lot of extra time they come up 
you know, they watch film outside of practice. They come up early in the morning. They, you know, they stay late after, you know, they, they do what they got to do in order to, you know, get themselves prepared. And so, um, you know, it shows on Friday night when we execute the way that we did uh, the other night. And then, of course, you know, not only running the football, but, but being able to have some balance and being able to throw it and make some big plays in the passing game. Thought that that was big. Um, you know, uh, they tried to do some things to double cover, you know, Jordan, uh, you know, in the secondary. And, and, uh, and so, you know, that, that left up, that left some one on one matchups with other guys. You know, uh, Devin Whittington had a big game. Um, you know, DeAndre Lang, you know, had a couple big plays in there. And I uh, thought Michael did a good job of throwing the football uh, to those guys and, and making good decisions. And so, um, you know, we're starting to, um, starting to, you know, to, to get better, uh, you know, to, to kind of click on all cylinders. Um, you know, the, the key for us now is, is to continue uh, that momentum and just, you know, continue to get better uh, because we know that uh, uh, there's, there's uh, you know, even uh, more uh, big matchups ahead. And uh, for us to uh, accomplish the goals that we've set, we're going to have to continue to, uh, to work and, and, and get better and keep moving in the right direction. But really proud of our kids and, and, and how they came out last week. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun to be back in Gobbler Stadium, too. Uh, that, that can't be understated. Our kids were fired up about being at home. Ray, you have anything to add on the Lano game? Yeah, I was just going to say, looking back real quick while you were talking, through three quarters in the first four minutes of the fourth quarter, your defense gave up uh, 23 yards rushing and 14 yards passing. Mm. And then, yeah, I remember you made that comment on there. I, I provided the numbers because some of the numbers were a little bit off. I quickly did it on the radio. So basically, of their 194 total yards for the game, 157 came against basically your JV defense in the mm-hmm. last eight minutes of the game. I'm not knocking the JV, but sure. that's when they put up 140 yards passing right. when you had, you know. Right. But, I mean, to give up 40, 37 yards total to, what, 12 times 3 is 36, and then four more 40 minutes of game time. Yeah. 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 Pretty impressive. And so. even had a pick six last week. Yes. We did. We did have a pick six, and yeah. uh, <laughs> that was a – you know, any time that you score outside of, you know, your offense – um, those are big plays in the game, big momentum plays. Um, you know, kind of that—that that was one of the plays that really kind of helped uh, create some separation. You know, point-wise early, and um, uh, that was a that was a heck of a play by by Jordan and, and really the rest of our guys. You know, uh, you know once he intercepted it, we kind of formed a wall yep. down the sideline, and he he went untouched. And you could see it. You could yeah. see it up top. Uh, yeah, that, that that wall forming. Yeah, so it was it was a good play. Good deal. Well, congratulations on that victory. Uh, we move on to the third game of uh, district tonight, Thursday night. Uh, kind of uncharted territory for you um, against a uh, East Side uh, Austin East Side Memorial team that's kind of struggling this year. Talk yeah. about what uh, what you're going to face against those guys tonight. Well, you know, you mentioned the fact that it's Thursday night, and and um, you know, it's uh, uh, it is a different routine for us this week uh, in on playing on a Thursday night. Uh, but at the same time, like I told our kids at the beginning of the week, um, you know, until you got on the varsity, you played on Thursday nights every uh, every week. Uh, That's so, a good point. That you is know, a good point. So it uh, this is uh, really, you know, for our kids, Friday night's different than Thursday night yeah. until they get on the varsity. So it's all relative. Um, you know, it's how you approach the week. It's how, it's how you approach the game. And, uh, and it is, I tell you, anytime you have something new, I think it's exciting. I think it's exciting for your kids, you know, anytime that you kind of get a little bit out of the routine. It's kind of like going into district play this year. Uh, you know, in, in district, you know, we're playing new district teams. We're in a, we're in a hill country district now. And, um, and so it's, it, you know, that, the, the newness of who we're playing in district, you know, was, is kind of exciting for our kids. And so, uh, you know, you kind of take that same approach going into this week. You know, playing on Thursday, we're going to Austin, you know, to play in Austin. Uh, hadn't played in Austin in a long time. Uh, so uh, there's a lot of new things that, uh, you know, that, that we have, that, you know, to look forward to. The other thing, you know, for kids especially, is uh, when you play on Thursday, that's one less practice. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, uh, uh, that, that's not all bad uh, sometimes. So uh, it's been a great week. 
you know, our kids have, uh, you know, uh, we understand, uh, you know, what's at stake in terms of uh, not just tonight, uh, but but also, you know, the, the remaining the remainder of our district race. Uh, the playoffs are right around the corner, and um, and so, you know, we we obviously we have the goal of winning the football game tonight, but we also have. Uh, you know the the uh, the goal of winning the rest of our football games, and in order to do that, we can't take any uh, steps back in terms of you know our execution, our energy, the things that we just talked about about what we you know did well against Lano. We've got to continue to do that uh, tonight, and so you know we play Austin Eastside Memorial. Um, you know they are a team that you know on the uh, uh, on the scoreboard is you know has struggled this year, um, but. I'm going to tell you, uh, you know, the, their coaching staff and, and their kids, uh, you know, they, they come to play every single week. And, uh, you know, you can't say that uh, about, uh, you know, a, a lot of kids or a lot of teams uh, when they've uh, gone through some of the, the, the struggles that, that they have this year to continue to fight, to continue to show up each week, to continue to pe- compete, to continue to represent their school and their community in the manner in which they do says a lot about who they are and uh, to me it's the essence of what high school athletics is all about um, you know uh, the kids kids gain a lot more uh, from their experience in, in athletics than just you know what the result is on the school board they're gonna they're going to learn about you know perseverance they're going to learn about hard work they're going to learn about teamwork and leadership and and uh, you can kind of see that um, you know by you know what these guys do on the field and and uh, in talking to their coach you know uh, um, you know he uh, uh, you know just bragged on you know the uh, the character of their football team and their kids and and uh, and so you know my hats off uh, my hats are off to them uh, in that regard, that's that's really what it's all about. And so, you know, we've got tremendous respect for these guys. Um, you know, and and what they're going to bring to the table. This will be the first their first uh, uh, home district ball game uh, where they get to play at home. And so, I'm sure they're going to be excited about that, and fired up about it. Uh, you know, offensively. They, uh, they run a pro-style offense. They're going to get in the eye uh, with a tight end. Uh, sometimes they'll be in the eye without a tight end. Uh, they'll get into some spread sets a little bit. Uh, they're a predominantly run team, but they are going to try to throw it a little bit. They'll try to catch you off guard, you know, by slipping a tight end, uh, you know, out and around or, or uh, you know, throwing it to, uh, you know, one, one of the receivers. But, um, you know, we've got to, what we've got to do is we've got to focus in on you know what we can control and uh, you know what makes us good what makes us tick and that's you know that's our preparation throughout the week that's our mental uh, preparation you know I talked to our kids yesterday uh, you know sometimes uh, you know the, the greatest challenges that you have uh, comes when you have success a lot of people focus on when you have adversity and, and obviously when you have adversity uh, you know it, it you have to find a way to bounce back to that, but sometimes it's easier when, when things are uh, difficult because all your focus becomes on that. But it's easy to let your mind drift, you know, after you've had a little bit of success. And we talked about, you know, that we are training ourselves in, in how we respond to success each and every week after a win. Um, because when you get into the playoffs, um, you know, what can, what can happen uh, is, you know, you kind of start getting on a playoff run and then, you know, you start thinking things that maybe aren't true about yourself about, well, we're, you know, we're better than this team. You know, we don't have to prepare the same way we did last week. We beat this team, you know, last year or earlier in the year. And so then you're, then you don't get yourself mentally ready to play in the way that you've done all year. And then you go out and you don't play the way that you're capable of playing, and all of a sudden your season's over with. Mm-hmm. And um, and so those are habits that you form um, throughout the year. And uh, and so one of the one of our challenges this week is is how are we going to approach the game? How are we going to execute tonight? How are we going? What kind of energy are we going to bring to the game? And uh, sometimes, you know, when when you are in the middle of success. I think that uh, sometimes it's harder to do that than when you have adversity. And so, uh, you know, we're going to find out a lot about the maturity of our football team tonight. I, I, I fully expect us to play extremely well. 
fully expect us to respond to that challenge. And um, but uh, but it is something that you that you got to learn, you know how to do. And I, I I told our kids that's something that goes far beyond football. Um, you know, it, it's something that you got to learn in life uh, of not only how to deal with adversity, but also how to deal with success and and stay humble, continue to work hard, continue to do the things the right way. And if you do that, uh, you know uh, you're you're going to be blessed by it. And so uh, that's what we're looking forward to tonight. What uh, what do you think you're going to see on the defensive side of the ball from them? Defensively, uh, you know they are a, a four two five. Uh, you know they're a four down line front, uh, but they also um, will get into some four three type uh, defenses. Uh, they're going to play you know man in the secondary or man free, um, you know quite a bit. Um, and so uh, you know they'll bring some linebackers or somebody off the edge every once in a while. Um, so you know we just got to do a good job of you know uh, of picking up any kind of pressure that we see. Uh, you know we got to do a good job. You know when we when we have an opportunity to uh, you know throw the football to, to execute. Uh, in, in, you know in, as far as pass protection goes, and then you know obviously the the throw and catch and. Um, you know, and then and then you know continue to execute in the run game. Uh, just like I said a while ago, starts with, offensively starts with us up front, and it starts with us being able to run the football. And um, you know that's something that uh, we want to you know, try to continue uh, to do tonight. Ray, uh, I know you don't have any information regarding no, I... any past information regarding Austin East Side tomorrow, but you, you do have a little bit, a little tidbit of information yeah, or history. No, we did. Quero, this we'll play in the stadium that Quero beat uh, Ennis in the semifinals in 1970, and then we went on and faced uh, Brownwood in the finals back in Austin. That at a different stadium in Austin Memorial Stadium, and of course that was the first time Quero had been to state. Uh, but uh, we did play in this stadium against Ennis. And I would have been in third grade, and I was there. I remember being there. <laughs> but that was a long time. That was, that a, was long, a long time. That ago. was a long. Yeah. T- that was a long time ago. <laughs> but that we have played in in that stadium before. Right. But that's only that's the only historical link I have to Austin to where we're going tonight. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Ray. Well, yeah. Coach, uh, good luck tonight in in your quest for another district uh, championship. Well, I appreciate it. T- talk about. Uh, what uh, what went on this week with the the uh, underclassmen yeah. uh, football team? Well, our our uh, you know because we're playing on Thursday night, it's a little bit it was uh, harder to um, to you know for some of our kids uh, or teams to be able to play with it. We designed this week for our junior highs to be our open week, um, so that uh, you know obviously we weren't going to be able to play on a normal Thursday night like they normally do. So they didn't have any games scheduled. Uh, it was a good opportunity for uh, for them to be able to, uh, uh, you know, just, just practice and uh, get ready for our last two district games uh, coming up. Our uh, freshmen uh, traveled down to Gregory Portland last night and played uh, played their freshman 138 to nothing and uh, uh, had a really good outing. Uh, and and that, was, that was big for us. We were able to pick that game up earlier, or I guess over the weekend, um, uh, Eastside Memorial originally was going to have a freshman team and, and uh, uh, had to call and, and uh, you know, cancel that because of uh, numbers. And so uh, we were able to pick up a game against Gregory Portland, and uh, which was good because we didn't have a game last week uh, against Lano because of all the flooding issues and things like that. And so, um, uh, so you know, they, they had a big win. Um, and then our JV uh, is going to be traveling with us tonight. Uh, because they, uh, Eastside did not have a JV uh, team and, and we weren't able to pick up a JV game. And so uh, they will be traveling with us tonight. Uh, um, and then as far as uh, other things going on, our volleyball team wrapped up their season uh, this past uh, Tuesday and uh, they are headed to the playoffs. Uh, we'll be playing Divine in the first round. They'll be playing next Tuesday. Uh, in Divine, excuse me, in Floresville. Uh, they will be playing in Floresville at 6.30 on Tuesday night for the by district round of the playoffs. And uh, we wish our girls the best of luck and uh, proud of them for what they've accomplished to this point uh, in, the, uh, in the season. Um, our uh, cross-country runners went down to the regional cross-country meet, ran extremely well. Brooke Wendell uh, ended up ninth overall, and uh, she qualified for the state meet. 
uh, Will Green and Cole Alcorn both uh, ran personal bests uh, in terms of their times. Um, they uh, fell short of, of qualifying for the state meet, but uh, any time that you run your best at the regional track meet, that's all you can ask. And and uh, and so they 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 had a tremendous season. Uh, Brooke will be going on to state here in, in about a week or two, and uh, you know we wish her the best of luck and extremely proud of her. This will be her second year in a row to be going to the state cross country meet and uh, top, top ten go from each region or top yeah. yeah it, he, I, what's, I'm sorry, the, Coach the, Gonzalez. Coach Gonzalez asks the top ten individuals who are not if you're if you're on a team that goes mm -hmm. you don't mm -hmm. count yeah. in those does that make sense yeah. so and i think kind of like golf in yeah, a way where but, but it, the, the medalist players mm -hmm. or whatever you have to be in the top 10 mm -hmm. and she got ninth overall which may mean she may have been the number one medalist because the other nine could all mm -hmm. been on a team right you thought i'm right, saying right yeah, that's kind of hard i hadn't got to talk to coach gonzalez yeah. yet but that yeah but i think will I'm on, I read it in the paper. I think, and, and I, people get not goofy, but they they don't understand cross country. They see that somebody got 20th, and it's like, oh well, you got 20th. Well, there may have been 160 or yes. 180 people, you know, yes. what I'm saying running. Yes. But I think Will got like 20th, and Cole got 34th. maybe 34th. Yeah. Does that 34th. sound right? Yes. 20th and 34th. Yes, yes that's correct. Uh, and so, I mean, just a great showing. He had we had never we've gotten individuals to state before, not often. But Brooke went last year. I can go back. Buster, uh, Hansel. Hansel, a couple of people went. But Coach Gonzalez was uh, hoping and crossing his fingers. We had never gotten two people there. But I, I, I'm curious to ask him how close Will was. I bet he, I bet he didn't. He miss was. It. Yeah, I think he said he missed it by about six people. Six people. Okay. Yeah. So he yeah. wasn't, you know, very close to getting a girl and a boy there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is no, a testament to what he's doing. So. Yeah. No, they they've really done a good job. And all three of those will be back next year. Next year. Uh, you know, Will and uh, uh, Cole are, are juniors, and Brooke is a sophomore. So, well, another uh, thing is it tremendously helps your track team. Oh, absolutely! You probably get sure multiple points at every track meet in the absolutely sixteen hundred and the thirty two hundred. Absolutely, meter absolutely. So. so, all right, good deal. Well, Coach, good luck tonight. Hey, thank you. Appreciate good it. Deal. Be safe on the road. Thank you. Welcome to the Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football. The Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football is brought to you by Energy Waste of Quero, Energy Waste Rental Equipment for the Eagleford Shale. And now, let's get you out to the stadium for tonight's game. Along with your producers and halftime show hosts Mike Cantu and Michael Cantu Jr., color analyst and statistician Ray Reese, here's the voice of the Quero Gobblers, Clay Poland. Hello, folks. Welcome to Austin ISD Stadium for tonight's district matchup between the Quero Gobblers and the uh, Austin Eastside Memorial Panthers. Ray, uh, got a nice cool night, uh, football weather night. Yes. Um, both teams were out warming up earlier, and I think we've got them on the numbers. Uh, uh, yeah, they only have 18, 18 kids suited out. 35 on the roster and 18 were out there. So, I don't know, maybe some, maybe some more will come out when the game starts. But uh, your gobblers have run through the run-through sign, the pink, uh, pink uh, cancer uh, awareness sign, and uh, led by – Kerry Grant in the flag, so uh, we've got about three and a half minutes to kick this thing off. Ray, you, yeah. Coach, you show, uh, what do you think are some keys to tonight's game? Uh, I, I think, it, like Travis said, you know, if we can just stick to what we do best, I don't think we'll have much problem. Well, I, th I think it's one of those... Um, yeah, their drums right below us are awfully loud. Wow. Okay, they have a, a lot of band in us, so. No, I, I think it's one of those games that you just, you, you, you want to play to, you want to play to your level. You don't want to play to their level because they have not, they haven't won a game yet this year and 
obviously their numbers are depleted. Uh, Clay, I don't know if you heard this, but somebody told me that they're a charter school and that because they're a charter school, they're essentially the size of a 2A high school, but they have to play in a 4A district because of travel. Uh, that, and I don't know whether that's true or not, so I'm probably broadcasting something, but that's what a person who has, is affiliated with the, with the school district uh, told me. And hence, uh, I know that they have had a uh, tremendously long season, but if you listen to the coaches' show, Travis uh, totally complimented them on their, you know, commitment to playing hard and their effort and, you know, not not ever giving up. But, uh, you know, I, from, from the standpoint of being – woefully out man numbers lies uh and everything uh you know it's a really nice stadium Quirrell played here in 1970 uh against Ennis in the state semifinals that Quirrell Quirrell won but uh we got the captains coming out uh for the gobblers Michael Barda Brandon Nimick uh Justin Ficklin and Kieran Grant for Austin East Side, Jason Otano Perez, uh, Camille Valdez, and Haninio Hernandez. Uh, there's not an NFL team that looks like Crow's uniforms, but Austin East Side looks like the Oakland Raiders. Yeah, they do. <laughs> great, great. Right, great. Uh, Gray, gray pants and uh, black jerseys. Uh, the Raiders have gray helmets or silver helmets, but uh, in any event, let's see what. And I don't know if you mentioned it, but the Gobblers are decked out all in white with green helmets. I don't know if you, you said that, Ray. Uh, uh, I did not. I, I know some of the people back in Coral may know this, but the head referee tonight who just tossed the coin in the air is Dickie Rodriguez from Yorktown. Uh, he and I go back to high school playing days. Uh, he was a good basketball player, even though he was not gifted with height. He could shoot. Uh, but in any event, uh, Quirrell won the toss, deferred to the second half. Uh, Austin Eastside Memorial will receive and will defend the north goal, and Quirrell will kick and defend uh, the south goal. Clay, this is the first time you and I have ever broadcast a game where you can look out across the track and there's another football game going yep. on that you can watch being played somebody i'm sure it's austin schools yeah, JV. i think it's a jv game going on playing so. on a playing on an adjacent field we'll remain silent for the playing of the national anthem folks folks fixing to get this thing kicked off this district matchup between the Quarrel Gobblers and the Austin Eastside Memorial Panthers first shout out goes to John Kanitka out in Stratton Texas John thank you very much we appreciate it 
Uh, Ray? Yes, sir. Jasper Quintero, Sr. Yes. Says, Ray, I was there in 1970. Quarrel won 12-6. 12-6. to 6. Jasper, I was here as a third grader. I knew we won, but I could not remember the score. But, yeah, we beat Ennis here. And then next week on a cold day in Austin, or what was then Memorial Stadium on the campus of the University of Texas, Garden Wood in the uh, – Lions of Brownwood defeated us fourteen to nothing. We're gonna we're gonna get this thing kicked off, and then I'm gonna give it to Ray to uh, give the the defensive starters. Uh, the kicking team is out there ready to kick this thing off. Isaiah Munguia will do the do the chores, and we'll see how this thing starts out. I tell you what, that one guy in the back better back up, standing at the ten yard line. No, we pooch high, kicked it. High short kick uh, by Munguia, fielded about the 22-yard line. Fielded and driven back. Uh, nice uh, coverage there. Go ahead, Ray. Give us the defensive starters. Yeah, starting tonight for the Gobblers on defense, Jordan Whittington in the backfield at safety. Seth Burks at a linebacker. Kieran Grant at a cornerback. Trey Moore as a uh, defensive end. Trent Haynes is a defensive back. Lester Denby is a linebacker. Uh, Kobe Giles is a defensive end. Justin Ficklin is a defensive end. Uh, Austin Swartz is a defensive back. Storm Drungul is a defensive tackle. And Elijah Vernado is a defensive tackle. All right, Panthers come to the line. Quarterback under center, single back in the backfield. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, throws quick out to the right flat, caught. He gives up ground and is uh, taken back for a loss back to about the 11 or 12 yard line. They're going to give him the spot of the 13 yard line. Going to bring up second and long. And Ray, you know, we talked about the numbers. Uh, there are 11 players on the field and there are eight, eight players suited up on the sideline. So, so 19. And they have four, four coaches on their coaching staff. So big disparity in numbers compared to the Quarrel Gobblers. Panthers come to the line, two receivers to the left, one to the right, quarterback under center and a single back backfield. They jump and flags are thrown. Legal procedures against the Panthers, so this will go back five yards. Shout out to Doyle Cruz and Otwood Brown and Glithy Cruz, class of 1988. Glithy is. Thank you all very much for listening. We appreciate it. That's going to take the ball back to the eight-yard eight yard line. line. Yeah, they lost. Bring up third, uh, second and twenty-one. And lost seven on the pass on first down, and then a five-yard penalty. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback barks out signals. Gets the snap. Throws. Just throws one up. Caught by DeAndre Lang for an interception. He's reversing field, and he's got some blockers down to about the 10. Reverses field back this way. Now he gives up. Touchdown, Gobblers. Sorry. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't know. You're so good at that. Wow. Quarterback just threw that thing up uh, well under thrown. DeAndre Lang took it to the Gobbler sideline. Reverse field. Cut it up. Got some yard, uh, ground and uh, went into uh, the end zone for a touchdown. 23-yard return. Isaiah Munguia set to get the extra point. Jaden Nichols is your uh, snapper and McNary is your holder. Good snap, good hold, and it's through. So, folks, with uh, a minute 14 into the game, Quarrel's up seven. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. All right, folks. All right, folks, back here at uh, 
Austin ISD Stadium for the Gobblers to kick this thing off after the DeAndre Lang interception return for a touchdown. We got our hands full with those drums, Ray. Right? Ryan. Nice deep kick fielded at the, about the three-yard line by the Panther. He tries to bring it out, and he gets out to about the 10-yard line. So the Panthers will start deep in their own territory once again. Shout-out to my parents, Larry and Cindy, pulling out there in San Antonio listening to the game. Thank you all very much for listening. We appreciate it. And if I sound like I'm yelling, folks, it's because the, ba- the, the drums feels like they're in the booth with us. So... Uh, forgive me. We've turned our outside mic off, so hopefully that helps, but I doubt it. Here we go. They come to the line, two receivers to the left, one to the right, quarterback under center. Turns and hands off to the running back, up the middle, cut down after about a yard gain. Nice play there by Lester Denby. Looks like there was a hole there, Ray. They did. It looked but, uh, like he was going to make some yards. Dindy came in there and cut him. We're going to give him a gain of 21. about 21. two or three. So uh, bring up second and seven. Same formation. Now the quarterback's in a uh, shotgun formation with the li- running back lined up next to him. Two to the left, one to the right. They jumped, and the flags come out. Shout out to Justin Hilbert listening to us in San Antonio, Texas. Go Mean Green. Justin, thank you. We appreciate it. Panthers come to the line in the same formation. Second and 12. They jumped again, but they didn't call it. Ball's on the ground. Quarterback falls on it inside the five-yard line. Going to be spotted at the three. Third and 16. With the Panthers lined up on their own three-yard line. Well, they started the first drive at the 20 and were snapping it from the 9 when they threw the interception. They started this drive on the 10, and now they're back at the 3. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, quarterback under center. Single back in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands off to the running back up the middle. He gets uh, loses yards. Going to give him a, a one-yard loss, so it's going to bring up 4th and 17 from the, their own 2-yard line. Shout out to Lewis Lockwood listening back home in Quarrel drinking uh, drinking a cold beverage, class of 1978. Thank you, Lewis. We appreciate it. Deep for the Gobblers lined up at the Panther 27-yard line is Jordan Whittington. 55 or 50. Good snap. Got it off. Jordan fields it at about the 27, and he is uh, got – a couple of yards to get into the end zone, and he does, folks. That was too easy right there. Uh, yard return. 27 yard punt return. Uh, Gobbers are up 13 to nothing, and the offense hadn't even been out on the field. The punter was 54, Mike. Based Shout out to Glenn and Sherry Portis listening to us back in Quarrel. Thank y'all very much. We appreciate it. Mungia set to kick the extra point. Jasper Senior, you're going to get your offensive starter sooner or later. <laughs> Mike Foreman's here with us tonight from the Advocate, and he and I are riding feverishly. <laughs> you can't, it's happening so fast we can't keep up. The extra point is good, folks. That brings the score to uh, 14 to nothing with 7.57 left to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 124 years, the Quero Record has been DeWitt County's most highly read, historically dominant, award-winning, relevant, community-serving, and supporting local sports and news source. Since 1894, the Quero Record has been making a difference in the lives and livelihoods of the residents of DeWitt County. Call 361-275-3464 today to become a subscriber or visit DeWittCountyToday.com for more details. 
Well, Clay, they're they're leading in time of possession because we haven't possessed mm -hmm. it yet. Exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Jody and Jimmy Zaveski listening to us back in Quo. Thank you all very much, Zaveskis. We appreciate it. All right, here we go. Gobbler kickoff team back out on the field. Munguia set to kick this thing off. High kick. Lands at about the 10. Picked up by the Panther, and he swarmed. Giving up yards back to about the 7. So, uh, 8, they're going to give him the 9. So, Panthers will take over again deep in their territory, in their own territory. Shout out to Tommy and Michael Yeager. They're down from Newcastle, Wyoming, visiting their mom and dad, Linda and Charlie Hoff, out on Calagar Road. So thank you all very much for listening to the, to the broadcast. And... I feel to mention those last two touchdowns. They were both brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. I, I got so excited because they were they were unorthodox plays that I apologize for that. Uh, I'll do a better job of that in the future. I'm sorry, Mr. Go, uh, Mr. Gomez. I think you're going to get a chance to say his huh. name a couple I know more it. times than I. Quarterback hands off to the running back over the right hand side, and he's brought down by the whole left side of the of the uh, Gobbler defensive line, led by uh, Justin Ficklin. No, no gain. Actually, a loss of one. Going to bring up second and eleven. Panthers come to the line. Single receiver split to either side. In an eye backfield. Quarterback under center. Takes the snap. Hands off to the running back over the left hand side. Gets some positive yardage. Brought down by Trey Moore. Out to about the 13-yard uh, line. Going to bring up third and seven. Shout out to the Gomez family back in Quarrel listening. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Panthers come to the line in a third and seven formation. Ball is at their 13-yard line. Quarterback turns, fakes, the, the and is pursued. Just throws it to the out-of-bounds, incomplete. He was uh, pursued by Trey Moore and Kobe Giles. So that's going to bring up fourth and seven. That was one of those outside the tackle box, just all he could do to get it past the line of scrimmage, but he barely got it past the line of scrimmage, so yep, yep. avoided the intentional grounding. DeAndre Lang and – I'm sorry, Ray. No, uh, go ahead. DeAndre Lang and, and uh, Jordan Whittington are lined up at about their 35-yard line to – I'm sorry, the Panther 35-yard line to receive this punt. High, high, over his head. He gets it off. Barely. Partially blocked. Partially blocked, takes a Panther roll, and the Gobblers will take over at the Panther 30-yard line. Almost a disaster there for Austin East Side. Actually, it's number 50, Mike. There's two guys with the same. Shout out to Marianne Kenny listening to us back in Quail. Thank you very much, Marianne. Okay. Gobblers come to the line. Michael Barta is your quarterback. Two receivers split to the right. Kieran Grant lined up behind him. Trey Moore lined up next to Barta. Barta takes the snap. Goes deep. Got a man. High points it. Jordan Whittington oh, knocked defense. it out of his hands at the goal line. That's a good nice, play by nice, number six. Yep, nice defensive play there by the, uh, uh, the Panther. He... he, he Whittington ran a, a go route right down the sidelines, and uh, Barter just threw it up to him, and it was a nice defensive play there by yeah. uh, the East Side Panther. Going to bring up second and ten. And Jordan had it in his hands. Yeah, he, he just went up and knocked it out of his hands. Yeah, he did. Safety number, number six for them is... Uh, S single uh, single receiver split to either side. Hand off to Kieran Grant over the right-hand side. He's following his blockers and gets into the end zone for a touchdown. I tell you what, who, who was that blocking out there, the wide receiver? He Lang. DeAndre Lang. DeAndre Lang pushed 
number one, Nathan Escalante, from the 30-yard line all the way to the 15 and then knocked him on his back. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez, State Farm Insurance. As uh, Isaiah McGee sets to kick this extra point. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. So with 5.40 left to go in the first quarter, that brings the score to Quarrel 21. East side zero, you listen to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of various schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. All right, folks, back here at Austin uh, ISD Stadium. Gobbler's up 21 to nothing following the Kieran Grant 30-yard run. Isaiah McGee is set to kick this thing off. We've possessed the ball for 27 seconds and have 21 points. <laughs> Deep kick by Munguia fielded at the five-yard line. He takes it uh, up the middle, gets out to about the 12. Going to give him the 14, so uh, Panthers will take over starting at their 14-yard line. Shout out to Carla Reed from Sterling, Virginia. Carla Reed Sterling from Sterling, Virginia. Thank you very much, Carla. We appreciate you listening. Panthers come to the line in a uh, eye, eye set backfield. One receiver split to either side. Quarterback under center. Um, we got number 69, Vernado, jumped, causing their guy to jump. So that's going to be five yards forward for, for the Panthers. First and five. Ball's going to be at the 19-yard line. Same formation. Quarterback turns, hands off to the run back up the middle. No, no go. Going to lose a yard. They may give him the original line of scrimmage. Seth Burks was in on that tackle. Yeah. Panthers come to the line, single receiver split to either side in an eye backfield, quarterback under center. Cobbler defense pins her ears back. People jump, they don't call it. Hand off to the running back over the left-hand side. Gain of about one, maybe one and a half. Number 30, Austin Schwartz on the tackle there. Going to bring up third and four. Get him two. They put it at the 21. Panthers come to the line. Same formation. Quarterback under center. Third and four. Turns and hands off to the runner back. He tries to bounce it. He's going to lose yardage. Elijah Vernado, Kobe Giles, Seth Burks, all of the men on that tackle to, to, to knock them back for a, a, a yard. Going to bring up fourth and five as the punting team comes on. Lang and Whittington lined up at the Panther 48-yard line to field this punt. Following the last punt, the Gobbler defensive line is probably going to come after this guy. Because that snap is not, not uh, coming back there very fast. 
They got it off. He bobbles it. It blocked. It rolls into the into the end zone. Gobblers pick it up. They got to give it. Didn't go into the end zone. Right at the one foot line. Um, Gobblers recover it. They will take over from there. What is that? A, Can't tell who that that it. For the block, or how do you do that? Uh, yeah, hey. Okay, Gobblers are going to line up uh, after the block punt at the one foot line. In a power formation. Uh, Barta lined up in a shotgun with uh, running backs surrounding him. Turns hands off to the running back up the middle, Lester Dindy, and he goes in untouched five yards deep. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Nice uh, one play, one foot, one foot drive. As uh, Munguia sets to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and a line drive kick that is right through the uprights. That brings the score to Quero 28, Austin Eastside 0, 225 left to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Gobble Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf. Volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. We're back at uh, Austin Eastside the Memorial Stadium. Munguia is set to kick this thing off. High kick. Fielded at the eight yard line by the Panther. Takes it up the sideline. Now he tries to get up the middle and he's brought down at about the 14 yard line. By number 20, Landon Castro. Nice uh, coverage there by Landon Castro. Gobbler defensive line gets in their three-point stance on the sidelines and then sprints out to the line of scrimmage as the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage. Eye formation, quarterback under center. Turns, hands off to the running back up the middle. Met at the line of scrimmage. Fights for extra yardage. Going to give him a gain of about one, maybe two. Going to bring up second and eight for the for the Panthers. You're right, Mike. When he turned, I could see. I could just see the two. I uh, thought I looked back and see the big. Got two. Panthers come to the line. They jump. They don't call it. Yeah, they do call it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Like that, I guess it still picks it up. All right, illegal procedure on the Panthers going to bring up the second and 13. I formation quarterback under center Tur drop straight back, looks to throw, he's pressured. Just heaves it up in the air. Almost picked off by D. Lang, but he's out of bounds. Ray, you know, I mean, he's he's got no time to throw, and when uh, he does, he just throws he it just up. He just throws it up. Yeah, he just chunks it. So, going to bring up third and 
The other thing about it, 13. for those of y'all who obviously are listening and aren't here, the poor quarterback runs all the way to the sideline every play. Running for his life. Well, no, to get the play. Oh, yeah. I got they're not shuttling it in with a wide receiver or a running back or something or signaling it. He literally runs all the way over to the sideline and runs back to the huddle. All right, here we go. Third and 13. Quarterback under center. Single receiver split to either side. Turns hands off to the run back up the middle. He tries to cut it and get some positive yardage, but uh, back to the original line of scrimmage. Going to bring up fourth and ten. Ball is spotted at the uh, Panther 16-yard uh, line. Punt and team comes on. Whittington and Lang deep, lined up at about the Panther 40. Panthers have not gotten past their 20-yard line in this first quarter. Played everything deep into their territory. <laughs> Five minutes, seconds left to go on the play clock. They could have snapped the ball and run for a first And down. it's a high snap, but he gets it back and he gets it off. Whittington catches it at the 40 and fair catches it? Yeah. Okay. That was, I'm sure, a call from the sideline. Yeah. So, Gobblers will take over at the Panther 41-yard line. That is the end of the first quarter with Quero leading 28 to nothing. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. Yeah. All right, folks, back here at the uh, Austin ISD Stadium for the beginning of the second quarter. Quarter leading 28 to nothing. Gobblers take over at the uh, Panther 41-yard line. They come to the line. Two receivers split to the right, one to the left. Grant lined up behind Barta in a shotgun. Fakes, runs a bootleg out to the right. Got a wide open Trey Moore at the 30, at the 20. He's got blockers. Then he cuts it in and is taken down at the 12. If he had stayed on the, uh, along the sidelines, he may have got it, right? I agree. So, uh, big game there on the uh, bootleg uh, drag route to Trey Moore. First and 10, Quarrow at the uh, 12-yard line. Pick up a 29. 12. Barta to Moore. Barta, uh, yeah. Gobbers come to the line with Barta in a shotgun. Single receiver split to either side. Grant lined up to his right. Barta hands off to Grant. Delayed uh, up the middle. Touchdown. Just a uh, j- kind of a delayed draw play to Grant, and he goes in untouched pretty much. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance as we have an injured Panther on the field. Got an injured player on the field, and we think that they're already run, doing a running clock. We th- anticipated that they were going to do it in the second half, but they may already get this yeah. thing. Well, no, they didn't. Like I said, on the on the one 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 foot touchdown run that we had, they ran off 17 seconds. Yeah, they're kind of they're kind of cheating and shaving. 10, 15 seconds every, t- every chance they get. So, folks, we got the medical out there uh, looking at the injured Panthers, so we'll take a break too at 
to uh, at uh, 11.04 left to go in the half. Coils up 34 to nothing. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GBEC Home for emergency AC repair day and night. GBEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked hardware parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, B016098E. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quarrel High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation. Eagle Ford. Vibe Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vibe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vibe, V-Y-P-E, Texas.com. And also pick up your Vibe magazine today. Get in the game with Vibe Media. All right, the injured Panther is being uh, helped off the field. So, uh, Mungia is set to kick this extra point following the Kieran Grant touchdown. Good snap, good hold, and a line drive kick right through the goalpost to bring the score to 35 to nothing with 11.04 left to go in the half. We'll leave it here. Um, <laughs> I hate to put some pressure on you, Ray, but what, what, what well, I can the, give you our offense. Yeah, give, give, give me some uh, numbers. <laughs> we've, we've won four plays from scrimmage. We have, let's see, 42-43. 63. We have 72 yards of total offense. We have possessed the ball for less than a minute and a half. Wow. And it's 35 to nothing. Wow. All right. Well, that is the uh, story of the night so far, folks. Turnovers and gobbler defense. Mungia set to kick this thing off. Boots it deep over the Panthers' head. Goes out the back of the end zone. East side will start at the 25. Yeah, that'll be their best field position of the night. The yes, it will. Thank you, Ray, for bringing that up. I. Uh, Munguia did the other team a favor by kicking it out the back. That's their best field position. Gobbler defense comes out on the field. Looks like it's still the first teamers, Ray. Yeah, for us it does. Yep. I think I think they'll play the probably the first half and then you we're gonna see a litany of Double numbers. Quarterback under center and eye formation. Hands off to the running back up the middle. Flags on the play. Yeah, see, they're letting the clock run right now. Yeah. Yep. Clock is clock is running uh, as they mark off the five yards. So it's first and 15 takes it back to the 20. Ray, they come, they're coming to the line. They're running the same exact play. So, I mean... Look at this. It's going to be the same play. They didn't even call another one. There it is. Hands off to the running back up the middle. Gets positive yardage. Even when we knew what the play was. At least you and I knew what the play was. Yeah. Going to bring up uh, second and 12. Brought down by Trey Moore. Number eight. Yeah, for three. Yeah, I was say. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Single back lined up behind the quarterback. Takes the snap, hands off to the running back over the right-hand side, and he is driven back hard by uh, uh, Storm Drumble along with uh, number 23, Caleb Verner. 
they're going to give him the original 21, wasn't it? Original line of scrimmage. Going to bring up third and twelfth. Same formation, two to the left, one to the right, single back, lined up behind the quarterback, under center. Turns, hands off to the running back. He's met at the mesh point, and no, no, no gain. Going to be a loss of one, actually. The whole right side of the gobbler line met the running back in the backfield, fourth and long. Ball is going to be spotted at the... Uh, East side, 21-yard line. D for the Gobblers is Whittington and Lang lined up at about their about the Panther 46. Fairly good snap. Kicks it away from our, uh, our returners, which is a smart move. It goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line, so Gobblers will take over at the Panther 38-yard line. 17-yard punt. They're, they're letting the clock run but in change of possession. Sure. It's just running. You're exactly right. The halftime is going to be the longest thing tonight. Here we go. Gobbers come to the line. Grant laying to the left. Whittington to the right. Now Grant comes in motion. Fake to Grant underneath. Looks downfield. Got a man wide open. Caught. D laying at the goal line. Touchdown Gobblers. Great execution of that play there. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Nice one play drive. Okay. Munguia set to uh, kick the extra point as the clock continues to run. Good snap, good hold, and good kick. So, folks, with 6.57 left to go in the half, that brings the score to quarter 42. Austin, east side, zero. And they're even letting, I know it's changing possession, but they're even letting the clock run uh, in between kickoffs, Ray. You know what I mean? So, Travis better hurry up and get those uh, <laughs> those uh, JV kids in. Munguia set to kick this thing off. Line drive kick over the Panthers' head. Lands in the end zone, goes out the back. Panthers will start, uh, start out at their 25-yard line. 5.48 left to go in the half. 5.48 and counting. Panthers come to the line in an eye backfield. One receiver split to either side. Quarterback under center. Takes a snap. Turns hands off to the deep back. Over the left-hand side. Nothing doing. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Justin Ficklin. Austin Schwartz. Joe Cardenas. All on the play. Shout out to our buddies Roland Villafranca and Henry Ludicky. They're working the clock at the Memorials, uh, Memorial Stadium game in Victoria. Thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Thank you. Eight seconds left on the play clock. 
And uh, I think Austin Eastside is going to call a timeout. And they do with 425 left to go in the half. Gobbler's leading 42 to nothing. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, back here at uh, Austin ISD Stadium with 425 left to go in the half. Gobbler's leading 42 to nothing. Shout out to Roland Villafranca and Henry Luke. They're working the clocks at the Memorial Stadium uh, in Victoria for tonight's game over there. So uh, thank you guys for listening. We appreciate it. Two receivers split to the left, one to the right. Single back in the backfield, quarterback under center. Takes the snap, hands off to the fullback in the backfield, and he's met at the line of scrimmage. Nothing doing. Just nothing there for the uh, Panthers. Going to give him a loss of one, third and 11. Yeah, Trey, uh, Clay, we've only, we've only run. We, Quail's only had the ball six snaps. It's 42 to nothing, and we snapped the ball six times offensively. Mm. So that's a touchdown to snap. Yeah. <laughs> Time of possession, we're not well. That's not shouldn't say that. At twenty, at twenty-seven seconds of possession, we had twenty-one points. <laughs> Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center. Single back in the backfield. Takes the snap. They jump, but they don't call it. Throws it out there to nobody. Closest person was Kieran Grant. Incomplete. D. Lang was the closest person. I correction. Fourth and 12. Ball's gonna, ball is spotted at the 23-yard uh, line of the Panthers. Punt team comes on. Lang and Whittington lined up at the 50. High snap. We're not even rushing. Ball hits the ground, caught by Lang. He uh, tries to make something out of it, and he's at the 30, at the 20. Got some blockers going down the sidelines. Goes in untouched. Exactly uh, 50 yards, yeah. 50-yard 50 uh, yard punt return by DeAndre Lang. Uh, no, I don't think so either. I don't think he, he really didn't try to. He, I mean, he w was kind of jogging at first. But then he turned on the Jets, and uh, the rest is history. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard for us to keep time stats tonight because the clock's just literally running. So a, a 26-yard punt and a 50-yard punt return for a touchdown for DeAndre Lang, and we have flags on the play. So. And it makes no sense when they stop it. I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden they are arbitrarily stop the clock. All right, so uh, encroachment by the defense. This will move this thing forward. Munguia stays out there to kick the extra point. That last touchdown was brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Good snap, good hold, and a good kick. So, with forty, with a minute forty left to go in the half, which is probably going to be the last play of the of the half, uh, that brings the score to quarter forty nine, East Side zero. We'll we'll keep it here since the clock is running. Folks, you know. Austin Eastside. I mean, they're just they're just working with a short stick, and uh, the Gobblers have pretty much. I don't mean this ugly. I wouldn't even call it a short stick. They have, they have a toothpick, and <laughs> I mean, the, 
like that last play yeah. there, Lang was going to let that thing go, picked it up and was just kind of jogging. The referees did not blow the whistle. He had to keep going, so he just turned on the Jets and went down the Gobber sideline for a touchdown, untouched. So he didn't full out try to try to run that thing back. Uh, don't you agree? I agree. No, I agree. Once he started running and nobody was close to tackling <laughs> yeah. him, he just kind of had to keep running. <laughs> exactly. So, and I think the guy could have probably knocked him out of bounds at about the four, but he just gave up. So I don't know. Nice kick there by uh, Mungia out the back of the end zone, and that will pr probably be the last play of the half as the clock runs. No, no, so, they had any, yeah, 31 seconds on the play clock and 18 seconds on the game clock, and Austin's already going to the locker room. So, folks, uh, that's going to be the last play of the, uh, of the half with the Gobblers leading 49 to nothing at Nelson Stadium in Austin, Texas. You're listening, you're listening to Gobble Football on KMAXSports.com. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. When your AC stops working, it doesn't care what time it is. Call GBEC Home for emergency AC repairs day and night. GBEC has over 40 years of experience in air conditioning service, plus fully stocked high-wear parts and background check professionals you can trust in your home. Serving your needs 24 hours per day, 7 days per week is what we do. Call 800-328-0630. Texas AC License, b one 6098 e For over 40 years, the Quero All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quero All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. For over 40 High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. Lance Tire Service is your one-stop shop for tires, brakes, alignments, and general automotive repair. They offer 24-hour road service for passenger vehicles, light trucks, agricultural, ATVs, industrial, and light commercial. They've moved to a new location, 1003 West Heaton on Highway 72 in Quero. Stop by and visit with Clayton and Clifford. Their friendly staff is always ready to assist you with any questions you may have. If nothing else, stop by to visit with Clayton's trusty dog, Cleo. Check out their website at lancetireservice.net. You can get a quote, see promotions, shop tires, and look at services offered. Lance Tire is a proud gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Give them a call at 361-275-2387. Lance Tire Service. Anytime, anywhere. We'll be there. This is Colt Reeve, just as the Quero Fighting Gobblers are deep in tradition, so is KN Driving. Family owned and operated since 1960, KN has been serving up the best homemade hamburgers, enchiladas, and burritos, along with frosty mugs of KN Root Beer. Open Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. It is oh so fun and oh so good. K.N. Drive-In, 514 East Broadway, 
in Cuero. Come see them in person. Give them a call at 361-275-3171 or order online at canyondriving.com. Go Gobblers! City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Cuero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Cuero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Cuero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Cuero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of area schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. Bright Media is the state's most comprehensive high school sports media outlet covering UIL, private schools. Vipe has been in Texas for over a decade. Visit their website at Vipe, B Y P E, Texas.com and also pick up your Vipe magazine today. Get in the game with Vipe Media. High school coverage on the radio is a lot like Tinder. Hi, lover boy. One flick of the finger and we're gone. Goodbye now. The only difference is you're not going to meet your phone at the bar and go out on a date with it. You are sick. At least I hope not. I mean, come on. But I do believe it was Kevin Garnett who said, This is the KMAX Sports Network. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the or
Onto the field, the Eastside Memorial Dance Team, the Silver Strutters, and the Eastside Memorial High School Panther Band. Thank you. 
that Memorial Panther Band is accompanied by Martin Middle School Band, directed by Ms. Earhart. All right, all right, folks, back here at uh, Nelson Stadium at halftime. Ray, uh, you want to talk about uh, what transpired in the first half, and then we'll get into some uh, some other Gobbler uh, sporting events. Surely. Uh, well, it may be the weirdest statistical half in all the years that I've been doing this, <laughs> but in any event, uh, Quarrel had four first downs. Austin Eastside had zero. Quarrel only had 43 yards of rushing on three carries. Uh, Austin Eastside had 15 carries for three. Uh, Quarrel had 67 yards of passing. Uh, Austin had negative seven. Quarrel was two of three with no interceptions. Austin uh, Eastside one of five with one interception. Quarrel did not punt. Austin punted six times for a total yardage of 93 yards. So that's about 15 and a half yards of punt. Um, neither team fumbled. Quirrell only had one penalty for five yards. Austin Eastside had four for 20. Uh, you know, the hidden yardage is here, Clay. We had three returns for 110 yards, and those 110 yards were all, all three of those returns were touchdowns. Uh, Munguia was seven of seven on extra points. Uh, you know, we only had uh, six offensive plays, three rushes, two completions, and one incompletion. And three punt return, uh, three returns, two punt returns for a touchdown, and one uh, interception return for a touchdown. Uh, so uh, obviously, uh, Mike Foreman's here tonight. So we and I were talking. You know, not that it matters, but it doesn't do anything to help your individual statistics or your team statistics because it sh skews, you know, everything. With maybe the exception of points scored uh, per game. But in any event, uh, on the other sports fronts, uh, there wasn't much going on uh, other than to tell you that the freshman, the junior high was off last night. Uh, the freshman uh, went to Gregory Portland and played Gregory Portland last night down in Gregory Portland and uh, came away victorious 38 to nothing. Uh, there was no JV game as Austin Eastside Memorial did not have a JV, so they came with the varsity tonight, and I imagine it'll be all JV uh, in the second in the second half. Um, next week there will be a, a full slate of games on the football front. Uh, the junior high will be playing Navarro at Gobber Stadium at four o'clock, five o'clock, six thirty, and seven thirty on uh, Thursday night. The freshman will travel to Navarro at 5 o'clock, and the JV will be at Navarro at 7 o'clock. And then the varsity for parents' night will be at home uh, next Friday night uh, in Gobbler Stadium at, uh, at 7.30. Uh, on the volleyball front, uh, the girls did uh, clinch a playoff spot by virtue of their two previous uh, victories earlier in the year over Gonzalez. Ended up in a tie with Gonzalez, but will advance. And... If you want to watch some playoff uh, playoff uh, volleyball, the the Lady Gobbers will be at Floresville to play Divine next Tuesday night, uh, and I believe Tuesday night would be the thirtieth. Yes. Uh, so on I I October the thirtieth, Tuesday night, the uh, Lady Gobbers will be in Floresville, and that game will begin or that match will begin at six thirty for the by district uh, volleyball uh, volleyball playoffs. Uh, on the uh, cross country uh, cross country front, a really good job by the cross country teams this week. Uh, as you, we told you last week, uh, they completed at the regional cross country meet uh, in Corpus Christi on uh, Tuesday, and uh, we had three runners competing, uh, uh, and uh, they had. Uh, Let's see, uh, sophomore Brooke Wendell for the girls finished ninth running 11.29 for the two-mile course, and she qualified for the state meek in Round Rock, which will be held on November the 3rd. That's the second year in a row that Brooke has made it uh, to uh, to the state uh, cross-country meet. And on the boys' side, Will Green finished 20th, and Cole Alcorn 
finished 34th in the game. And that's out of you know probably more than 150 people. But uh, both guys ran under 16 minutes for the three mile course, uh, and all three athletes were invited to the South Coast cross country meet in the woodlands on november the 7th due to their fast times at at regional and i think both will and uh cole ran personal best and we want to wish good luck to uh uh brooke wendell who will be running in round rock on saturday november the 3rd at the at the state meet and that's what's going on uh girls basketball and boys basketball, basketball has started practicing, practicing. so so uh, in any event, Clay, I'm going to go check on something real quick if you can handle it for a second here, okay? Good deal. Folks, we got about seven minutes left uh, uh, before we kick this second half off. Both teams are on their respective ends warming up. Mr. Cantu, you're in the booth, you're in the booth now. Yes, sir. Tell us what you're, uh, what you're seeing out there on the field when you were down there in the first half. Well, uh, Gobblers came out to play some ball. Um, obviously, if you look at the talent, I mean, there's a big difference. Um, but, I mean, what I'm seeing is a lot of sportsmanship. Um, I know the kids are out there playing, playing, playing football. You know, we're doing our thing. But I think the kids understand that there's a big difference in talent. And so, uh, uh, I mean, we're, we're, we're doing our thing. We're scoring touchdowns. Uh, you know, our punt returns look good. Um, our defense is, I mean, I think if you look at it, I think um, Austin East has controlled the clock mainly because, they punt the ball off and we run it back for a touchdown. And so <laughs> right, we're, we're we're getting one play drives and scoring, and and they're uh, so they they are definitely beating us on the time of possession. Uh, like Ray mentioned, it's it's kind of uh, uh, not really indicative of uh, a true time of possession because they're running the clock. So anyway, yeah, um, we're gonna. I got my my roster here of uh, sub varsity players. You're probably gonna hear me call a lot of sub varsity names in this second half yeah i imagine that the, the uh, sub varsity guys are going to get a i know they didn't they didn't have a game scheduled for uh, for this week so hopefully they'll get some uh, time in and uh, hopefully i can get some pictures of them too here in a little bit yep well 49 to nothing is your score at halftime at nelson stadium east side memorial versus quarrel district matchup Next, I, ne go ahead, Mike. I oh, said so the one thing I did notice too about um, Austin is you know there a lot of false uh, false starts. It looks like they're uh, they're coming off the ball before the uh, the center snapping, getting the snap off. So uh, that's something they might they might need to work on uh, in the second half. Next week the Gobblers will be at home against uh, the Navarro Panthers for a big district matchup uh, to determine possibly determine the. Uh, the district winner so uh if you can't make it to the to gobbler stadium then please tune in listen to the broadcast shout out to adolph robinson listening to us in lawton oklahoma adolph we appreciate it thank you also a couple shout outs to uh some of our sponsors um titan electric uh out of quero uh, appreciate the support by uh, Mr. Bobby Bettis, uh, Energy Waste, uh, and also Lance, Clayton Lance over at Lance Tire, uh, gave us a $500 check today to right. uh, renew his sponsorship, so I uh, appreciate that from, from Mr. Lance, also uh, fixes some of our patrol cars every, every once in a while, so I think mine's in the shop over there right now. You know, folks, those uh, those sponsorships go to the, the uh, Gobbler Athletic Booster Club that, that uh, helps all athletes not just the football program but the whole athletic program so uh if you're interested in be a, being a sponsor contact shoot me a text or contact mike uh, mike can too and and he can get you set up because it is it goes to a good cause yeah and i'm, I'm really proud to say last last year we uh we donated approximately twenty six thousand dollars to the athletic program that is that's huge right there you know, a lot of schools just have a football booster club, yep. um, but but Quarrel Athletic Booster Club is for for all sports, and I think that's indicative of from of, junior high up. Exactly, like I said, I think it's indicative of the, the community and uh, the the sponsorship, and you know the uh, the amount of love the, the the town shows for all of our athletic programs. A good point. I'm going to hand it over to to Ray. I'm get down there and uh, take some more photos, guys. We'll see y'all. All right, thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Folks, we got about three minutes to, to the second half kickoff, but uh, 
east side memorial is already out on the field yeah. ready to kick this thing off so uh, we, may, we may start this thing before yeah. the, the, the referee is uh telling the clock keeper to go ahead and put 12 minutes on the on the clock and let's get this thing going so maybe the quickest maybe the quickest game we ever we ever call right well the, the good thing is is not that this matters in the grand scheme of things but the food to feed the, the team after the game has arrived <laughs> good deal we, we Oh, we got they got in, Mike. They got in. They got in. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, we were worried. We heard they might run the clock in the second half, and when they started running in the first half, the uh, people driving from Quora with the food for, I think, 96 people tonight. We were, we were starting to worry where they going to get here on time. Food sponsored by Kane in Drive In. Yep. So. D for the Gobblers is uh, Jordan Whittington and Marcus Gomez lined up at about their 15 yard line. You think we uh, squib kick it all, uh, fielded by the Gobblers at about the 40, 40 yard line, so they'll take over a pretty good field position. Shout out to Mark and Johnny Harvey listening to us out there. Thank y'all very much. We appreciate it. Gobblers are up forty nine to nothing, beginning of the second half as the clock runs. Going to be yeah, this is a, a quick second half. This folks. game, this game should be over in twenty five minutes. Twelve and a minute in between, I'm guessing, and then twelve. Okay. Well, he's still no. Still. Yeah, he's got a lot of like. That's not. Is that? That's first teamers in there. Oh, that is Jordan. Okay. Yeah. Shotgun formation. Two receivers to the left. One to the right. Barty is your quarterback. Takes the snap. Drops back. Looks to his left. Throws downfield. Wide open. Marcus Gomez caught it in stride. Touchdown Gobblers. One play. Touchdown Gobblers. That uh, touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Just a straight go pattern by Gomez down the gobbler sidelines. Barta put it right in his hands. Didn't even break stride. Since I'm supposed to be the analyst, but from a, from a play design standpoint, it was pretty good. They faked the, the slip screen. You know, Jordan stepped back, and yeah. he kind of he hitched like he was going to throw it to him. Throws the defensive back, and he just ran right by him. Probably would have run right by him anyway. But, but Munguia set to kick the extra point. High snap by Nichols, but it's it's handled, and the kick is good. So with ten and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter, that brings the score to quarrel 56, Eastside 0. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Titan Electric specializes in construction and electrical work, residential, commercial, and industrial construction. New homes, remodels, add-ons, and more. They can build homes from the ground up. Titan Electric. Call 512-720-1189 or find them on Facebook as Titan Electric of Quero, Texas. Titan Electric, proud sponsor of Quero Gobbler Athletics. Go Mean Green! All right, Gobbler set to kick this thing off after the uh, Marcus Gomez touchdown reception. Deep kick over the uh, receiver's head into the end zone. It'll come out to the 25-yard line. Panthers will start from there. Gobbler defense comes uh, out on the field with a couple of new faces. Some starters and some reserves. Panthers come to the line with two receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation, single back lined up behind the quarterback. High snap, keeps it himself. He gives up ground and tries to reverse field and is dropped in the backfield for a loss. Brought down by number 56, Marquise Williams. I don't, Clay, I don't mean this to sound critical in any way, but, I mean, they just, I don't know what, the, the, even just the fundamentals, just the, yeah. the, the way they hand the ball off, the yes. snap and the shotgun. I mean, it's like, 
You're, you're right. I mean, yeah, it, yeah. it looks like a seventh grade team in varsity bodies. Yes, you're, you're right. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, quarterback under center, single back in the backfield. And going to call encroachment on the Gobblers. Shout out to Debbie and Fritz Lynch listening back in Quero. She wishes she could be here, but uh, she can't be. So, Debbie, thank you for listening. Fritz, thank you. We appreciate it. Second and eight following the penalty. Quarterback takes snap, hands off to the fullback up the middle. He tries to bounce it, gets around the corner, uh, pulled down by Devin Whittington, but not after a gain of about six. That's their best offensive play of the night right there. Going to bring up third and two. Ball is spotted at the Panther 33-yard line. See if the Gobbler defense can uh, pitch a shutout on these first downs. Mike, who ran that? Eight. Eight. Thank you. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center. Legal procedure on the Panthers, so this will go back five. Same formation, two to the left, one to the right. Quarterback uh, hands off to the oh, fullback right. over the right-hand side. He fights for yardage. Uh, Going to be short of the first down marker. Out to about the 32-yard line. Going to bring up fourth and about four. Quarterback on the sidelines talking to the coach. And he's uh, not hurrying, so I guess he's going to call a timeout. And he does. So with 5.33 left to go in the third quarter, Quarrel's up 56 to nothing. You're listening to Gobber Football on KMAXSports.com. Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve. And Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of area schools and churches. During the various sports seasons, there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. All right, folks, back here at Nelson Stadium. Panthers still on the sidelines talking about it. And I think they are going for it. Fourth and four. Fourth and a long three going for it. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Shotgun formation. High snap. Quarterback keeps it himself. Tries to bounce it around the left side. And he's going to be bottled up after he reverses field. Big loss. Gobblers take over at the Panther 24-yard line. Storm drum glue along with the rest of the gobbler defense. Takes the quarterback down for a loss, and the ball goes over on downs. Loss of eight on fourth down and three. They actually stopped the clock on the change of possession, Clay. Sure did. Blackwell is your quarterback now. Kevin Smith lined up behind him. Turns, hands off to Smith. Up, to, Fakes to Smith. Caught. Uh, I'm sorry. Fake to Kevin Smith. Threw a uh, uh, up the middle seam route to 
Looks like Devin Whittington incomplete. Going to bring up second and ten. He had me faked out because uh, the hole for Smith was huge. I thought he had it and was going to score. Shotgun formation. Blackwell is your quarterback. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Now Joe Cardenas comes into a slot. Blackwell takes a snap. Hands off to Smith around the left-hand side. He's cut down for a loss. Nice defensive play there by number three, Jeremiah Quinn. So Gobblers go backwards. That's the first negative play. He lost five, though. Yep, third and 15 for the Gobblers. Ball's spotted at the uh, Panther 29-yard line. Devin Whittington split out to the left. Cardenas and Tyler Curley out to the right. Shotgun formation. Now Cardenas comes into a slot. Blackwell is your quarterback. Takes a snap. Fakes the handoff. Drops straight back. Got a man wide open. In his hands and out of his hands, number 80, Thomas Mutter, incomplete. That has got to make Coach Reeve mad. Fourth yeah. and 15. He, he could have been more wide open. Right, he could have picked three other guys who were just about as wide open as he was, too. The guy running down the seam on the backside was nobody even covered him. So, at this field position, the Gobblers will go for it. Lined up at the Panther 29-yard line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Smith lined up behind Blackwell in the backfield. Curly goes in motion. Blackwell has a man wide open, overthrew him. Incomplete. Had Devin Whittington in the corner of the end zone, overthrew him. Ball goes over on downs. No, that was... That's gonna, the public address announcer is behind the down. Gobbler, that was fourth down. Panthers take over at their 29-yard line, which is going to be close to their best field position tonight. Now, so a couple of missed opportunities there by the Gobbler offense to move this thing down the field. Two and a half minutes left to go in the third quarter. And they are stopping the clock on change of possessions, Ray. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback under center with a single back in the backfield. Turns and hands off to the fullback up the middle. And he's stuffed by Joe Cardenas. Ray, I don't know if you noticed, but watch that back. He's already kind of yeah, he's falling he forward. He leans forward every play. They, yeah. they could. They could. They could if call this him. was an evenly matched game of a higher caliber of play, There'd be uh, penalties on every other play, probably. Yeah. They're just letting them kind of like you do in a junior high game. Loss of two on the play brings up second and 12. Gobbler's up 56 to nothing with a minute 54 left to go in the third quarter. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Quarterback takes a snap, drops straight back, looks to throw. Pressured by Marquise Williams, running for his life, and he's going to be taken down back at the 15-yard line. Big loss. <laughs> Do you see number three for Austin Eastside? He just jumped up like he caught the ball and took off running, and the, ball, the guy's quarterback had been sacked. I did. I'm not sure what's up with that. but Going to bring up third and long with the ball spotted at the 16-yard line. Yeah, they're going to be nine minus rushing for the game at this rate, Clay. Yeah, in the second half, rushing, let's see, minus 19, minus 24. They're minus 14 yards in the second half, and they only had three rushing in the first half, so they're minus 11 for the game now. Two to the right, one to the left. Quarterback rolls to his right. He's pressured, looks to throw. Throw just heaves it up. Oh, geez. And number 26, Jackson Hardwick had it in his hands, and his own man, Devin Whittington, knocked it out. Incomplete. 
We had two gobblers trying to go for the interception, and neither one got it. So it's going to bring up fourth and 24. The ball spotted at the 16-yard line, and I think they are going to punt this time. Gobblers have nobody deep. Good snap. Almost blocked. Turns it over. But takes a quarter roll. Ball, ball is touched dead at the 34-yard line. Quarrel will take over from there. And that's the end of the third quarter as well, folks, with Quarrel leading 56 to nothing. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. City Mortgage is a proud supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Branch manager Randy Smith is a longtime supporter of the Quero Gobblers. Loan officer Zach Smith is a former Quero Gobbler. Call them and they will make your home loan worry and stress free. Give them a call at 361 576 9890 or visit them at citymortgagegroup.net. City Mortgage is a gold sponsor of the Quero Gobblers All Sports Booster Club. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Quero ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. All right, folks, back here for the beginning of the fourth quarter. Gobblers uh, take over first and 10 at the Panther 34-yard line. Blackwell is your quarterback. Offset eye in the backfield. Quarterback takes a snap, hands off to Kevin Smith. Up, up the middle. De- ball's on the ground, and he fumbles it. Panthers recover at the 15-yard line. Big game by Kevin Smith. Puts the ball on the ground, and they, they're they acting like that's their first turnover that they've recovered this year, Ray. Uh-huh. Yeah, ball's at the 15. Not, so. not a, uh, a good start for the Gobblers. 19, Trying to stay sharp. Go ahead. 19 yard on the carry, but fumbled and lost it, and they recovered it, so. That's another one of those. Yeah, they're running the clock again in between here. So, Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center. Takes the snap, drops straight back, looks to throw. Throws downfield, nobody there, incomplete. Had four gobblers around the uh, intended receiver. Ball landed nowhere near any of them. Second and 10 from the 15 yard line. The Panther 15 yard line. They come to the line with two to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center with a single back in the backfield. I've never. They jumped again, no flag over the right hand side, nothing doing back to the original line of scrimmage. Clay, we've seen a lot of things tonight we've never seen. This is not on the football field. But I've never seen one school's drill team go over and get Austin Eastside's drill team is in the Coro stands dancing while the Coro band's playing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right, so we're going to give him a gain of one. Right. We're going to be third and nine. Caleb Werner uh, made the tackle on that last play. Panthers come to the line, two to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center, single back in the backfield. Takes the snap, drops straight back, throws it up in the air. Incomplete, almost picked off by number 21, Tyler Villa. He had it in his hands, and the Panther defender, the Panther receiver turned into the defender. Incomplete. Fourth and nine. 
couple of missed up opportunities but for the Gobblers uh, to get turnovers in this second half. Yep. Again, they're going to punt, and Quarrel's not going to even put anybody back. High snap, one, one-handed by the punter. Nobody rushes. Good punt. Takes a Panther roll into Gobbler territory, and he picks it up before it stops rolling. Gobblers will take over at the 48-yard line. If he'd have let it go, it would have probably rolled another three or four three yards. yards but I agree. Gobblers will... Take it. Let's see. 16, 34, and two, a 36 yard, 36 yard punt. Gobblers come to the line. Blackwell in a shotgun lined up behind. Kevin Smith lined up behind him. Single receiver split to either side. Blackwell takes the handoff. Hands it off to Smith around the right-hand side. Got some room out to the 40. Brought down at about the 36-yard line, 37-yard line of uh, east side. Nice run there by Kevin Smith. Thomas Metter out there blocking for him. First and 10, Quarrow. Same formation. Slot back uh, moves to the other side. Blackwell quarterback. Smith lined up behind him. Turns hands off to Smith over the left-hand side. Big hole out to the 30, down to the 20, going down the sidelines, and uh, he steps, steps out. out of bounds at about the 10. Nice run there by Smith. First and goal. Gobblers at the 10-yard line. Seven minutes left to go in the game. Gobblers leading 56 to nothing. Single receiver split to either side. Shotgun. Blackwell takes the snap. Hands off to Smith. Up the middle. Big hole. Cuts it. Touchdown, Kevin Smith. Touchdown, Gobblers. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. Nice uh job of the offensive line there to knock the defensive line back. He wasn't touched till about the goal line. Three rushes by Smith covers 52 yards and a touchdown. Isaiah Munguia set to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and Munguia Remains good. So with 6.36 left to go in the game, that brings the score to Quarrel 63, east side zero. You're listening to Gobble Football on KMAXSports.com. For over 40 years, the Quarrel All Sports Booster Club has been there to support all CISD athletics. The Quarrel All Sports Booster Club raises money throughout the year to assist the athletes in golf, volleyball, tennis, track and field, football, baseball, softball, and cross country. The Booster Club donates over $20,000 each year to support the athletes. Whether it's uniforms, sports equipment, or ice machines, the Quero All Sports Booster Club is there. The Quero All Sports Booster Club meets every Wednesday at Davis Contractors, located on FM 236. Become a member and help us help our kids. All right, folks, back here in Nelson Stadium, Gobblers lead 63 to nothing. 621 left to go in the game. Coach is making some substitutions on the kickoff team. Mungia is still in there as your kicker. Deep kick by Mungia. Rolls into the end zone. Come back out. First and, first and 10 for the Panthers at their 25-yard line. 
Not that it matters, but they've actually run the clock less in the second half than they ran it in the first half. I know. You're exactly right. They're stopping it in between possessions. Which they didn't do in the first half. <laughs> Got a lot of solid green helmets out there now, Ray. Yeah, on, on defense. I don't see anybody with a white C, so this is... Number 14's out, out there with a white yes, C. Yes, he is, yeah. So we got like 10, 10 guys. J.D. Nataro. Panthers come to the line. Quarterback under center. Turns, hands off to the run back over the left-hand side. Cut down after a short gain. Brought down by number 40. Dev, uh, it was 14, Clay. The linebacker. Didn't, wasn't it? Uh, it was 40, 42. Mitchell Crane huh. was the first one to make the tackle. But number 14, J.D. Natara, was in on it as well. Quarterback takes the snap. Turns and hands off to the running back. Same play over the right-hand side. Fights for yards. Goes nowhere. Jalen Reeves in on that tackle. Shout out to the Pena family listening uh, back in Quarrel. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Gobblers lead 63 to nothing with five minutes left to go in the game. Third and six. Ball spotted at the uh, Panther 29-yard line. Shotgun formation. And we have a Panther timeout. So, we'll take one, too, with 4.50 left to go in the game. You're listening to Gobbler Football on KMAXSports.com. Energy Waste has provided surface rental equipment to the oil field and construction industry since 1986. Energy Waste is proud to have been recognized as a three-time winner in community and social investment by South Texas Energy Economic Roundtable. Energy Waste is a proud supporter of all Prairie ISD athletic programs and all of the supporting organizations and would like to remind you, once a gobbler, always a gobbler. Right now. Okay, folks, we're back out of the timeout called by East Side. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, quarterback in a shotgun. They may have shot at a first down here, Clay. Let's see here. Quarterback takes a snap. They jump, but they didn't call it. He's going to be bottled up. Big loss. Big loss led by number 55. Raiden Rivera, that pushes him back, fourth and about 14. Yeah, from the 25 all the way, excuse me. They're going to punt the ball. They were out at the 29, the ball back at the 21, so they lost eight on that play. High looping uh, snap. Nobody deep for the Gobblers, and it takes a Panther roll down to the uh, 46-yard line of Quero. So they will they will take over there with exactly four minutes left to go in the game. Quero leading 63 to nothing. As you as you hear the Panther band drums booming. Tune in to us next week. We'll be at Gobbler Stadium for the for the uh, Quarrel Gobblers versus the, the Navarro Panthers. Should be a good contest. All right, we got number 14, J.D. Nataro in at quarterback. Two receivers split to either side for Nataro. Goes in motion, fakes the, the handoff, keeps it himself around the right-hand side. Got some room. No, no penalties there is the late penalty. He's going to run it in for a touchdown, but they're going to call holding on the uh, wide receiver out there on the corner, waiting for him to do it. Now they're, they're waving it off. 
I thought it it it's just, he like he, I don't think I didn't I didn't think he was so he just buried yeah. him. <laughs> he just so fourteen. No, J D Nataro. So J D Nataro with the what's the how long? Uh, fifty four. Fifty four. Fifty four yard touchdown. Fifty four yard run. touchdown run by J D Nataro. That touchdown brought to you by Brian Gomez State Farm Insurance. That play could not have been done without the blocking of his wide receiver out on the uh, on the corner. So. Now we have a new kicker, folks. Number 11, Isaac Vargas, is coming in to do the kicking duties. Yeah. I don't think that's right. Yeah, in, uh, in a... Low snap, put down, but it goes through the upright. So successful point after attempt by Isaac Vargas to bring the score to 70 to nothing in favor of the Quarrel Gobblers with two and a half minutes left to go in the game. You listen to Gobbler football on kmaxsports.com Bush's Chicken knows its success comes from loyal customers in the communities they serve and Bush's Chicken believes in giving back to each community where there is a Bush's restaurant. Most weeks throughout the year, Bush's Chicken is donating meals and or its famous iced tea in support of area schools and churches. During the various sports seasons there's a good chance you'll find Bush's Chicken in the press box or the concession stands at many high school games. If you were at a game or school event and bought Bush's iced tea or tender rolls, you'll be happy to know that Bush's Chicken donates the profits to the School District Booster Club or Community Group. Devon Energy is proud to support the Quarrel High School Gobblers and all DeWitt County High School athletes. From our team to yours, good luck this season, both on the field and in the classroom. Devon Energy Corporation. Eagle Ford. All right, all right folks, back here at Nelson Stadium. The clock ran the whole time, uh, so we got a minute 17 left to go in this thing. New kicker kicking off, number 65, David Root. Straight on kicker, pops it up, short, and the Panther falls on it, I think. Gobblers are all around him. Looks like they're going to give it to uh, east side. With 53 seconds left to go in the game. Ball is going to be spotted at the 35-yard line. Panthers take over. Who kicked off again, Tony? David Root was the kicker. Panthers come to the line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback under center with a single back in the backfield. Turns and hands off to the back in the backfield. He tries to go right up the middle. Goes nowhere. Gets maybe a yard. And that is probably going to be the last play of the game. Folks, that's going to be the last play. We're not going to come back and give you any stats because it's going to take Ray a while to get all these stats taken care of. I mean, do, do you, Ray, do you want to come back and give any stats? Or I mean, they're so lopsided. Well, hang on. Yeah, let's just. I, I'm more curious what they're – it won't take me. If we'll just stay here and talk for a okay. second, it's not going to take long. That, but that is your ball game, 70 to nothing in favor of the Gobblers. They did everything they could to, to keep this thing uh, respectable. But, uh, like I said, Eastside Memorial is fighting with a short stick. So, as the, as the teams uh, cross midfield to shake hands. Clay? Yes. We're just going to do this, just because this was the curious part of it to me. Austin Eastside Memorial did not have a first down in the entire in the entire game. The best field position was the 29. They're 29, right? Yes, their best field position was their own 29-yard line. And uh, I just added this, and the drums had me all messed up, and I can't add and listen to that at the same time. Minus one, minus three. Minus 14, minus 13, minus 10, minus 9, minus 17. They were 11 carries for minus 16 yards in the second half. So for the game, 26 carries for minus 13. 
minus 12 yards, and uh, then uh, minus seven yards passing. So minus 19 yards of total offense and no first downs for Austin Eastside Memorial tonight. Folks, if you stuck with us through this thing, we appreciate it. Right, we do. <laughs> um, we will see you next week at Gobber Stadium against the Navarro Panthers. Ray? Yep. Good night, everybody. Good night. This has been the Gobbler Sports Network broadcast of Quero Football. Brought to you by Energy Waste of Quero. Energy Waste Rental Equipment for the Eagleford Shale. This broadcast is copyright property of the Gobbler Sports Network, all rights reserved.